Hi, I'm Angie Fields, and I'm the Director of Clinical Services at Gulfport Behavioral Health. And during this time where we've been dealing with COVID, we have been offering stress management um, talks about, you know, facts about uh, stress and management and things about uh, ways to cope with it. So today I'm going to be presenting uh, what would be segment one of uh, three segments of a talk about stress management. So when we, when we start talking about stress management, the first thing we really want to do is really define stress. What is stress? Um, we use that word a lot interchangeably. Um, I feel so stressed, but you know, really we need to define stress a little bit more. So stress is really when or how the brain and the body respond to any demand, uh, any type of challenge, such as performance at work, you know, tasks that we need to accomplish, uh, you know, the demands of our position um, or school um, and, you know, anything that's a significant life change um, or a traumatic event, any of those things can be stressful. And we know now that we've got a lot of data and research that stress can affect our health. So it's important to pay attention to how we deal with minor and major stressors. Um, and that will let us know when we know to seek help. So let's talk about examples of stress. In our routine daily life, we have things that are stressful. So just the pressures, like I mentioned earlier, about school, work, family, uh, and other daily responsibilities. You know, after work, do I have to go drive here? Do I have, you know, to go to the grocery store? Those things are like our routine stress. Uh, but on top of that, we may have sudden negative changes that cause uh, extra stress. So those would be like losing a job, um, having a relationship end in divorce or, you know, just breakups, um, illnesses, uh, grief or loss. Those kinds of things are considered to be a little more um, serious stress. And then we have a category that's identified as traumatic stress. Uh, traumatic stress is when we experience an event such as a major accident or, you know, if we're involved in the military and combat, uh, if we experience an assault um, or a natural disaster, um, and, it, and it really doesn't have to be something that happens to us. It could be something that we witness um, where there's serious danger of somebody being hurt or killed. So, and one thing we do know about stress is that what might be stressful to one person is not necessarily stressful to another and vice versa. So a lot of it has to do with the set of coping skills that we have already. Um, and maybe some of the things we were taught as we grew up and whether or not we have the resilience to deal with major issues that occur. So that's a little bit about defining and giving examples about stress. So the next part is, you know, what are the facts about stress? Well, we know that stress affects everyone. So um, everyone experiences some kind of stress from time to time. And a stressor may be a one-time thing, or it can be a short-term thing. It can be a repeated long-term types of uh, activities or stressors. Uh, and what I mentioned earlier that some people may cope with stress more effectively and recover quicker uh, from a stressful event. But the fact of the matter is that we're all experiencing some level of stress just by nature of uh, being human beings. And we know that not all stress is bad. So stress is the thing that signals the body to prepare um, to face a threat or flee to safety. So it's that fight or flight response that, you know, we kind of have in the primitive part of our, you know, our brain and helping us function. Um, you know, oftentimes if we're involved in a crisis, 
you know, that, that part of our brain kicks in and helps us get to safety. Um, so we know that when we're in that process, that we have um, increased heart rate, uh, our pulse will quicken, we may breathe faster, our muscles tense up, um, and our brain uses more oxygen and increases activity. And so all those functions are aimed at survival in response to stress. So those are kind of natural responses to stress. Um, if we have a non-life-threatening situation, stress can motivate us to do something. Um, you know, like say we've got a test, uh, we might feel really anxious because we're stressed about it, and so that motivates us to study more. Um, if we have an interview for a job, those kinds of situations are naturally gonna increase stress, but it, it serves a function to help us perform. Number three, is that we know that long-term stress can harm our health. So I mentioned that a little bit earlier. And so what we know is that long-term stress doesn't allow the body to have a signal to return to normal functioning. So it's a brain-body connection type of thing. So when we're under long-term stress, we kind of endure it, there's no break from it. Um, and, and this can cause our bodies to have to overact to take care of itself. So it can, it can disrupt our immune system. So we know under, if we're under a lot of stress, you know, like some people, people break out in fever blisters or they may have a, develop a cold more easy. It, it makes us more susceptible to um, catching things. Uh, Long-term stress affects our digestive system uh, you know, we'll, we'll have nausea or just can't eat, um, upset, maybe uh, acid reflux, those kinds of things. And, you know, our cardiovascular system, obviously, if we have an increased heart rate and, you know, um, that's under a lot of pressure, then it's going to have a, a long-term effect on our heart. So part of the uh, other things that are involved in long-term stress is it impacts our sleep. Um, our reproductive systems and can result in headaches or uh, increase in sadness and anger or irritability. And, you know, sleep is one of those things that I think we've started to have more research about sleep hygiene is the term that's used because we realize that sleep is the only way that our brain gets to have a break. And if we don't sleep the amount of time that we need, then it causes an extra burden on the brain and the body. So over time, with the continued strain um, on our body from stress, um, you know, we might develop high blood pressure or heart disease, diabetes, um, and also we can develop mental illnesses such as depression or anxiety. So those are basically the facts about stress.